Welcome back to our greenhouse. It's the middle of December in the COVID year, so we've had a lot of time to work on the greenhouse. And uh, it's been a while. It was back in March or April when we did the last video about the greenhouse. And if you'll remember back what we did, we dug down to our climate battery and changed it from one zone to three to increase the airflow. And while we had that hole open, I added another 100 foot uh, climate battery zone and insulated that and put PEX and uh, PVC pipe in that so we could heat that from a solar hot water heater that I made. The purpose of this update is to let you know how that's going. And we've had some really cold weather. We've had uh, nights that have been in the low teens and today it's only about 27 degrees. The sun's shining, so it's about uh, 72 to 75 in here today. And it's really nice. So uh, the first thing I noticed after this was done was the airflow. So by changing the climate battery from one zone to four, I had a lot more air moving and the mean temperature down in the ground here is 63 degrees and so we had that temperature coming in all the time now what I noticed this summer was uh, when I was gone uh, if I left the fans on the temperature would always stay really good we have automatic vents that open in the top of the greenhouse but uh, we didn't have to worry about overheating and as the shoulder season came along and it started to get cold, it was the same thing. Um, it would never get below that mean temperature about 63 degrees. Now that it's been really cold, it'll get down into the 40s with all of that blowing, but it's never frozen here. Uh, we've harvested most everything out of the main area of the greenhouse, but we're still picking tomatoes and our winter crop that we've planted in three different places is doing quite well. Of course, it's growing really slow because there's not a lot of sunlight. So the ultimate goal of all these upgrades was to be able to grow in zones in the greenhouse. Instead of growing in the whole thing in the winter, we could grow in zones. So over the planter boxes, we put plastic and then we hooked one zone of the climate battery into each one of those planter boxes. Then I built a wall between the shipping container and the greenhouse. The reason I built that wall was to isolate the shipping container. Originally, when I built the greenhouse, I thought I'd just use that for a heat sink. So what that wall allowed me to do was to isolate the shipping container instead of just using it for a heat sink. And then I ran the heated zone through that heated zone, meaning the zone that was being heated by the solar hot water heater. Now, I didn't charge the ground up long enough this year. That was a mistake I made. Uh, right now, the water is running out of that solar collector at about 90 degrees but it's coming back still at the mean temperature of about 63. And I know that um, I'll never have to worry about that water freezing because it's always circulating and the ground is keeping it at that temperature. What I should have done was charge that PEX pipe up in the later part of summer and fall and got that ground really nice and toasty. That way the heated ground in that zone would heat the air that would run through that shipping container. But the worse it's gonna get is to blow in there at that 63 degrees. So if I want to grow in there in the winter time or start my seeds early, like usually I'll start my seeds in January, is all I have to do is heat that room up from that 63 degrees up to 70, 75. And that's pretty darn easy to do. And uh, just that one zone. And that one zone, remember, is isolated in basically an insulated box. Uh, the top of it is about five or six feet down and then it goes down to about 13 feet if i can heat that up beyond that on these hot days then i'll be able to to narrow that gap between the mean of 63 and the 70 75 that i want to heat it to to grow things in there in the winter or in the shoulder season so just to kind of recap what's happened is that having more zones in here has kept the temperature from freezing and being able to separate the climate battery zones into heated zones in the planter boxes and the shipping container and the fourth zone of course is still out here in the room 
and we'll probably let that shut down uh, after the tomatoes are done, which is going to be pretty soon. Allow our trees to, to winter and the ground to freeze. I think that's probably a healthy thing for it to do. But in the zones, uh, it should never drop below that 63 degrees. And uh, we can always put a little space heater in there if we need to, to keep that, that up. Now it's only going to grow so fast because there's not enough light and I'm not supplementing the light in those zones right now. The peach trees are only two years old and uh, I've had to trim them back about three times and they produce fruit the first year. This year we only had fruit at the bottom of the tree because I didn't, I didn't have the climate battery all done and it started to, they started to bud and then it froze in here at the top. So all those buds froze off, but we still had fruit on the bottom. That was disappointing, but it was a lesson for me. Moving forward, I'm gonna to have to watch these pipes. I'm probably gonna to have to insulate those. They're really close to the ceiling, so that gets really cold. So I'll keep an eye on that. And uh, if I have to, I can drop them down on the ground and cover them up. That might work also. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today and I hope you got something out of it. Leave comments, ask questions, be sure to subscribe and share and until next time, be blessed.